Hello, I've started my walk today in a small hamlet called Potterton on the outskirts of Leeds. It's about half a mile from the main A64 that goes from Leeds to York and then on to Scarborough. I'm walking down Potterton Lane, a lovely quiet tree-lined road, bluebells, wild garlic and many other wildflowers in the hedgerows and along the grass verges. I'm heading towards the village of Barrick to resume my walk around the Leeds country way. Last time I did the first section from Garforth and today I'm going to walk as far as Thorner. The way goes 62 miles round the outskirts of Leeds and is said to be never more than 7 miles from the city centre. The weather today is beautiful, blue skies, about 16 degrees, a light breeze, so different from a week or so back and it was still like winter. A little blue butterfly in the hedgerow. From where I've started to Barrick is maybe a mile and the whole of the road is tree lined on the left hand side and they're all now in leaf and the sun casting dappled shadows on the road as I walk. Further back at Potterton there was a whole host of crows nesting in some trees near houses and the few houses that are there the gardens were all looking pretty with clematis rambling over walls and climbing up pergolas. The short North of England gardening season is now in full swing. The wind catching the leaves as it blows through the trees. The road initially drops down before a short climb takes me up to Barrick. Barrick is a historic village. I think it's mentioned in the Doomsday Book and there's some speculation that it was the capital of the ancient kingdom of Elmeet. It's one of the few places in the area that still bear, bear the name. As I enter Barrick, I turn right into a little housing estate. This takes me through a snicket to the main area of the village. As I walk down on the right is a, a ditch and trees. A deep ditch that seems overgrown, but it is actually Iron Age ditch and bank. It goes all the way around, probably about a third of the village. The ditch is about five metres deep. It was built by hand about 2,500 years ago. The bank opposite is about five metres high. And it contains the stone and the little soil from the ditch, making a massive defensive barrier, giving protection from the flatland behind you. It is almost certain that the top of the bank would have had a wooden palisade. We have no evidence that the fort was ever attacked. Behind the bank lies the inner area of the fort. It covered about 10 acres, enough to provide shelter for many houses and livestock. It is possible that scrub and some trees were allowed to grow to improve the fortification after its construction. Followed the earthworks to your right to Bank Cottage and then by public footpath to the north of the fort. Here there is no ditch. A steep slope down to Rakebeck provides a formidable barrier. Here there is a possible earthworks entrance turned in for extra protection. The path goes to the boil, another possible entrance, and returns you to the village. The information I've just read is on a sign which is provided by the barrier in Elmet. Historical Society in association with English Heritage and the West Yorkshire Archaeological Service. It's quite an impressive feature. The path I was on going past the earthworks comes out at the back of the Black Swan pub in the centre of Barrick. There's the old church to the left, the gas going to the right and the Black Swan. I've turned right and walked up towards Wendell Hill. I'm now climbing the steps that takes me to the top of it as a small lane goes up from behind the gas going. As you reach the end of the lane you see a large field on a high round grassy hill with steep slopes. Climbing to the top the view opens up all around Barrick and the houses and the church and the trees in the village behind me. In front of me, open countryside, looking towards skulls that I can just see in the distance, near 64, just to my right. At the top is a 
big concrete plinth as the board at the entrance says the, the hill was used as an observation post in World War Two. The concrete plinth is all that remains. The information board at the top of the hill says this is one of about 600 hastily made Norman Mott and Bailey Castle. Some date from the conquest in 1066 and others from the Civil War between King Stephen and Queen Matilda, 1138 to 1153. This one was built about then. Mott had a wooden fortification on top. Some were later made into strong castles built in stone. There is no evidence visible here of stone replacement, but we know an undocumented excavation in Victorian times uncovered remnants of a stone structure. You are on the castle mound. To the west and south is the Iron Age ditch and ramparts. The Bailey, the outer castle yard, probably covered about a quarter of the hill fort, surrounding the Mott's own ditch. It may have extended to the curved street to the north, the Boyle, possibly derived from Bailey. The Norman landowner, De Lacey, also owned a vast area locally, known as the Honour of Pontefract. Barrick's castle was built to be the devolved northern centre for the honour, covering much of modern-day Leeds. By the 14th century, the centre moved to Rothwell. The castle was abandoned and forgotten. People believed the remains were a Saxon palace. In the Second World War, the Mott became a viewing platform for the Royal Observer Corps, who are standing on the base of the two-floor ROC building, from where enemy aircraft sightings could be reported. I've now picked up the Leeds Country Way again. I'm walking downhill down a street called the Boyle. I didn't visit the church today but could see it clearly from the top of the hill. It's quite an old church, parts of it date back to the 14th century. I think the tower is 15th century. At the bottom of the hill is a ford and a little footbridge. Also a footpath that goes round to the right along the bottom of the hill and joins up with the earthworks that I visited when I first entered the village. And from here you can get a feeling of the defensive works round the original hill, what the village might have been like all those thousands of years ago. Across the footbridge and there's a lovely green lane now heading uphill this will be my path for the next few miles. On the left is a, an old fallen down farmhouse with a keep out sign on the gate and barbed wire. The lane itself is lovely with a high hedgerow on both sides, deeply rutted from farm vehicles. The path continues down to a small stream with a footbridge over it <coughs> and a fallen tree over the footbridge. This next section is one of my favourite sections of walk around here. I, I don't really know the story of it but there's a little strip of land that runs alongside a stream that goes all the way up to Saw Wood and on this right hand side of the valley I planted trees. I think I looked once before and they seem to be mostly apple trees but it's a real peaceful pretty area. I've walked through a farm nearby that seems to do a lot of conservation work and I wonder if this is done by the same people. It's very pretty though, all mature trees along the stream where a hedgerow to the right maybe 10-15 metres wide and the young trees planted all the way. About halfway up the valley is a stone seat. It's a lovely place to stop for lunch. It's about halfway between Barrick and the A64, which you can now just about hear in the distance. Just behind where I'm sitting is a small wood filled with wild garlic. But this is just a sea of white as the trees go up the hill from the little valley. The ground is just covered in the white starbursts of wild garlic.
The stream now is tiny and it crosses the A64 and starts somewhere in Sawwood. It's typical of the streams in this part of East Leeds. This one, as do others, feed into the Cockbeck that eventually becomes a small river and flows into the River Wharf. I'm not sure which one is actually attributed as the start. Well, I've never seen that before. Since the last time I was here, somebody's building a compost toilet. Damn decent of them, as somebody who frequently seems to need one these days. The path reaches the main road, but runs parallel to it for a little way through a quite a nice woodland across the stream and there's a culvert that goes under the wide road. No sign of light at the other end, just a dark void filled with mud and slow running water. We miss so much by travelling in cars, I do it all the time, but there's so much that we don't see by foot or horseback. Seems to me at least a better way to travel. I'll come out onto the road soon and try to cross, and maybe some time. Well, that went well. As I lay by just to my left with an old double-decker red bus, the Red Bus Cafe. It's been there for as long as I can remember. I don't ever remember eating there, but it's a very popular spot with lorry drivers and the like. I've now entered Sawwood, which is a large deciduous plantation that goes quite a way towards Thorna. And there are a number of paths through it. The one I'll be taking takes me directly to Thorna. It's really beautiful. The bluebells are fabulous in here. The bracken is still flattened and brown from last year, although looking closely it is starting to, to come through and the sea of brown will soon be replaced by a sea of green. But oh my, these bluebells, they're gorgeous. They go as far as you can see into the woodland. After about 10 minutes you come out the other side of the woods. Once again, to open countryside. We're on the flanks here of an area called Thorna Moor. To the left of here, closer to Leeds, is an area called Windmoor. Although not like the moors you would find in other parts of Yorkshire. I think these areas of higher ground were given that name in the past. The path goes right or left, and for the Leeds country way, we follow the bridle way to the right. This is a broad lane with a hedge and trees on the right hand side and after a mile or so this will take us to Thorna. The track climbs steadily up till we're just about level with the top of Thorna Moor. There's a trig point marking the actual high ground, it's about a mile to the east. But now Thorna comes into view and just beyond that, beyond the tree line, the hills further round the Leeds Country Way, possibly past Bardsey even going towards Harewood. But this whole section, as I said this morning, it's it's really pleasant. This track's lovely. The skylarks at both sides now, high in the sky singing.
I have to imagine in days before cars what travel was like and the route I've taken today would surely have been the quickest way between Barrick between Barrick and Thorna you imagine people walking to visit relatives or looking for work and doctors and priests travelling possibly on horseback but communication was as fast as the fastest person or the fastest horse Today when I reach Thorna I'll, I'll turn round and work my way back to my start point next time walking the section from Thorna as far as Bardsey just coming up on my right is a footpath that goes across the fields to the summit of if summit's the right word of Thorna Moor it then continues to Bramham Park or, or back to Potterton where I started but what I have just noticed looking across the fields way in the distance are the Hambleton Hills <laughs> that I was walking in last week right the way at the other side of the Vale of York a dark black line against the grey sky the weather has now clouded over a little since this morning there's still a fair amount of blue sky but quite a lot of grey still pleasant though on reaching Thorna you turn left and follow the road through a housing estate at first it's Kirkfield Lane and then Kirk Hill in a short time a, a little lane appears on the left which you follow all the way down to the main street I think Kirk means church I don't know if it's North or Old English so I'm guessing these were Church Hill and Churchfield Lane this little path runs down the hill houses and gardens on the right and a hedgerow on the left Soon I'm once again on a metal road which has become stead lane and continues down to the towards the main street. I've reached a point where I can see the road in about a hundred yards and there's a turn into the left called Butts Gath. Looks as if there's some remnants of, of a railway wall or a a bridge and I believe the cross gates to Weatherby railway line used to come through Thorna for the beaching cuts in the 1960s this now begins a walk back to the start point after Butts the path soon enters open countryside and in fact soon comes out on what seems to be the old railway line this was a route that went from Cross Gates all the way to Harrogate, calling up Weatherby. My path turns off the old railway after a few hundred yards, but I've just checked the map and it goes for quite a long way towards Skulls and there are paths and lanes that link up to Skulls and Barrick. So that's definitely something I want to explore at a later date. For now though, I'm heading back towards Sawwood. There is, really is just so much to see and the more I walk, the more I see, the more I want to see. I haven't always had the time or the enthusiasm and it's no point regretting wasted time. I just know that now, every time I see a nice footpath I haven't walked down before, I make a mental note to try and fit it in path as you can probably tell is now going uphill open fields on the right beyond that saw wood and to my left uh, a hedgerow hidden amongst the hawthorn tree at the meeting of three paths is a public footpath sign to the disused railway 
and then the other way it points to Barrick almost back at Sawwood now just following a few little footpaths that will take me to the opposite end of where I was this morning I'm back in Sawwood the map shows this little section called Red Hills Plantation There's a lot of beach in this woodland and it's only just coming into leaf. There's also quite a lot of holly dotting the path. A big tree to my right that's come down. Its branches resting amongst the smaller trees around it. Still coming into leaf even though 95% of its root system is sticking up into the air. There's also a number of apple trees planted in the in the hedgerow that have got beautiful blossom on them. There are lots of wildflowers out now. The lesser celandine, the yellow buttercup type flowers, the white and yellow daisy type flowers of the greater stitchwort, the little purple bell shaped flowers of the common dog violet, dandelions in abundance, ferns coming through, and of course the bluebells. One thing I hadn't realised before was the scent of bluebells. It's hard to describe, I wouldn't know where to start describing scent, but it's so strong there's just this sweet smell hanging in the air. At the other side of the A64 from Sawwood, just dropping down to the little valley, I walked up this morning. Within a few feet of the cars is masses of wild garlic. The little white flowers on tall stems of garlic mustard and Herb Robert in profusion. Having reached the head of the Pleasant Valley that I walked up, this morning. I turn left as I'm not going back to Barrick but across to Potterton. Again I'm walking through a strip of land that's been planted. This time with native deciduous oak and rowan I can see Hawthorn Beach. I'm just to the right hand side of the wall, the other side as you can hear is the A64 but soon I'll turn back inland over the last few fields back towards Potterton. I really do enjoy walking through this farmland Walking away from the road is a gorse hedge to the left and open views back to Barrick in the distance and the little valley to my right I walked up this morning the gorse hedge gives way to a hawthorn hedge interspersed with sea buckthorn This is the farm I talked about a few podcasts back that has a fridge by the path with eggs for sale. I did have a look but there were none in. kqfarm.co.uk it's called. I'll check that out when I get home. Just walking through a few fields of pasture, a holly and hawthorn hedge on my right. I'm almost back at my start point, so it's time to bring today's podcast to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please tell other people about it. Join me next time if you can. Until then, cheerio.